Ethereum, Solana. There's so many public blockchains out there, but guess what? Partasia blockchain is bringing a unique mix into the play with this highly secure and private layer one public blockchain. And you're gonna to wanna to learn more about how their multi-party computation, MPC works. Stay tuned. Hello guys, welcome to The Human and Machine. Today we have another great interview with Brian Gallagher, co-founder of Potigia Blockchain. Brian, how are you doing? Excellent, thank you very much and thanks for having me on The Human and Machine. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, so look, privacy is a pretty complex topic in the industry. It has been discussed for like years and years, but it hasn't been fully solved. You know, how is uh, privacy related to Partigia blockchain? When you hear the word privacy, you immediately think, oh, the government's spying on me or, you know, Facebook has all my data. And that's kind of been the, the storyline to date about privacy. But in reality, I mean, when you do use Bitcoin blockchain and send transactions, it's relatively private still. You know, it is on a public ledger, but it's not like uh, you're being spied on like uh, when someone listens to your phone call, for example. Right. And so there is some like pseudo anonymity that's built in. So when we say privacy, we're not inventing something here that says me and you can secretly send each other money and criminals can do money laundering. That's not really how this works. It's more about adding the option of privacy while maintaining auditability and regulatory requirements. So that now we can solve major economic problems with this type of technology. Right. And uh, here's the thing is. There are a lot of alternative solutions like consortiums, you know, layer twos that do offer privacy. So it's definitely not a new thing. Can you simplify in the most high level terms? What makes Partigia special then in that case? So our token name is MPC and what that stands for is multi-party computation. But the name is a bit self-explanatory. It means that you can compute amongst multiple parties on private data. So the big innovation that we're bringing is multi-party computation, because if you look at zero knowledge proof, for example, which is another really common term you hear in the industry that's associated with privacy. That's limited to a two party computation. So you and I can share a secret on these other layer twos or on Monero or Zcash, but we can't have 10 of us share secrets. So in a supply chain context, using MPC multi-party computation and our private smart contracts, you're able to keep the data of 10, 100 people secret from each other and compute for the outcome you get. So if you and I and a group of friends wanted to find out who had the most money in the bank, what we could do is we could design basically a private computation where let's pretend that we were able to connect to each of our bank accounts, the software, and let's pretend our balances were encrypted so you actually couldn't see the balance. Software is able to compute who has the highest balance. So you can predetermine outcomes on private data. So let's say it doesn't need to know the balance, but it can know what the highest balance was. So basically we're able to keep data completely private, but determine outcomes and different solutions based on what everyone agrees to in advance. Uh, what's another example that maybe you know enterprises are using other than supply chain? So we're already working with two luxury watch brands uh, privately. When you get your brand new watch in a box, and I'm not going to say the brand because maybe in six months we'll announce the official partnership, but you're getting these uh, authenticity cards and they look cool and it's got your serial number on there. But recently we actually are using our MPC technology now to create a new unique web address each time so that if you tap that card to your phone, there's an NFC near field communication chip inside that generates a secret link to the company website with a unique URL each time you use it that shows that it is the authentic card associated with that piece. And then that's going to migrate and then also move to the blockchain next so that it can match that. So it's really about enterprises being able to like uh, keep track of things in a, in a way where you know, the user can actually authenticate their own good. And then you can use privacy and MPC to do it in a way that has integrity. Because if there was just one link or one thing on the blockchain that said this is a real piece and serial number, anyone could show that to anyone. Just like anyone can log on to Google.com and say, here's the website. Yeah, but right. using the MPC and secret key creation, we can generate a new unique browser each time you use it. 
And then you can also have that authenticity that displays in the blockchain displaying in a private contract that only you can see when you have the right key and code associated with your verification. And then uh, more on the fun side, right? Uh, Web3 gaming GameFi has been quite trending recently. Is there any like use cases with Partija in the GameFi space? Yeah, they're relatively focused now on privacy again. So like mystery NFT boxes where you can't see what's inside because it's truly in a private smart contract. So that's a bit more exciting. And so we're working with like Citus Heroes, which is one of the most popular up and coming games to deliver some type of feature set that uses a level of privacy. Um, but we haven't graduated past that yet because we want to maintain a, a level of focus. We're still in the earlier stage, so we don't have, an, you know, we don't want to spread ourselves too thin, try to onboard full games in that, in that capacity yet. But we have architected and built the layer one Partija blockchain to support high frequency transactions, low cost, scalability, and we have the privacy. So. For games that wanted to build, we're certainly one of the best options as we come to market for the reasons stated, you know, mostly on the scalability and affordability side. Gotcha. And then when you're saying fast, right, how fast is it? Because many blockchains claim to be fast. Yeah, we currently run 3,000 transactions per second, which is plenty fast enough for the current requirements of the network. But we have sharding built into the protocol layer. So that means we can dynamically scale up based on the necessary bandwidth requirements. So for example, each shard that we add to the network, currently we have three, delivers 1,000 transactions per second. So in theory, if we have 30 shards, we could deliver 30,000 transactions per second. And I'm also thinking like this would really help and make it easier for the regulators and like people who need to check an audit compliance because a lot of times it's pretty tricky, right? Doing compliance manual heavy work. So have you talked to like anyone kind of with this problem? Yeah, exactly. So that's why we designed it the way we did to make it, you know, auditable private smart contracts, not just completely private and untraceable because enterprises can't function without privacy. They also can't function without regulatory requirements and being able to satisfy yeah. those. So we built it so they can satisfy both. Yeah. So when we talk about architecture and design, again, going back to the original structure of the Partija blockchain, privacy, regulatory, we had to accommodate for that. But we also wanted to make sure we built in a network effect where we could be connecting to the existing and flourishing developer ecosystem. Because we know that if you just put a layer one out there by itself and you say, hey, everyone come join my layer one, it's going to be very slow. But if we say, hey, we're bridging and other networks and you can bring your assets and have the Partija blockchain, you can bridge data and privacy. We can now add value to the biggest existing developer communities who can use the MPC token and our private smart contracts for their existing dApps. So we're able to deliver value to all the other ecosystems that are currently thriving and get a network effect of people using MPC and Partija blockchain without needing to switch their entire dApp. In any game or dApp, there is some sort of private component like ID especially KYC like that's always kind of a thing that most a lot of people are still hesitant with because it is uploading information but if you can know that hey it's completely safe if I upload this you know secured by MPC probably would give a bit more confidence let's say uh, there's a game that has a minimum age 13 requirement yeah. um, instead of having to re-upload your document and give it to that game host yeah. they could actually use in a basically a piece of software that says hey you when you log in with that partija wallet it's gonna try to authenticate your private data to see if you match whether or not you're over age 13. and if you mm -hmm. do match it records a match on the actual blockchain itself so and it knows that that public key is associated with a verified provider who already authenticated the public key because there's a commitment on the blockchain that shows mm -hmm. there was a verification so you don't need to pass the actual documents along anymore you just need to be authenticated once get a commitment on the blockchain and then you're able to be authenticated without giving up your documents of course there's a lot of use cases where you need physical documentation that go beyond this level of authentication requirement and so you can do things to exchange that with a one-time uh, encryption pad there's other ways around that to make it a more secure delivery um, but yeah that's sort of what it's all about yeah, I think the more you think about everyday life, there's just so many things where Partesia could be used and it's a matter of how we can implement it along the way. Um, what would you say is like a good source to learn more about Partesia, what you guys do and MPC in general? 
So, I mean, partijablockchain.com is our, our website with all the information and resources. But then if you're just more want to follow community updates and be in the community conversation, you want to be on our Telegram channel. If you want just the high level updates, our Twitter is a pretty big account. We have over 200,000 followers. If you're a developer or node operator, you want to join our Discord. So all those links are available on our partijablockchain.com website. But that's where I would start. Yeah. So that's right, you know, for everyone watching, there's no excuse not to learn. <laughs> Everything's out there. Well, you know, lots learned here. I will definitely go study even more myself. Um, very, you know, interesting with the deeper you dive in. So thank you, Brian. You know, it was a pleasure to have you and we wish the best for Partigia blockchain. Thank you. That's really nice of you to say and uh, appreciate you having me on. The example with Partigia's integration with Cardano is an excellent you know, example of how they're cooperating and really delivering like that privacy component. So I think this is pretty cool. Now, what other blockchains would you like Partesia to be connected to? Comment down below. We like to know. Yeah, that's it for today, guys. You know, lots of very technical, but you know, quite interesting in terms of real life application scenarios with Partesia blockchain. So stay hungry and see you next time. Guys, for the latest news and updates, be sure to follow our social media, including Twitter, Facebook, Telegram groups and TikTok. There you go. Follow us. Links down below.